This week's episode of the Deck Chair and Yums podcast is brought to you by Presidential Condoms, our brand new sponsor of the Deck Chair and Yums podcast. Uh, these condoms are made from very, very thin excuses. And to be honest with you, you don't really wear a condom. You just go in full clip and pull out right at the last minute. So we a bit of satire there with Joe Biden quitting. Anyway, Nev, play the fucking intro. <laughs> What's up, motherfuckers? Yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? You're very welcome back to another episode of the Dexter and Yums podcast. Me, Mickey Bartlett, a.k.a. Dexter, him, Connor Keys, a.k.a. Monsieur Yum. Mm, giddy up. Any crack then? No? No, nah, uh, fuck no, off. What's going on in the world today? <laughs> right on time! <laughs> uh, it's been a few wee, well, wee bumps in the road, but you're not major. Your boy Joe, give it up. Uh, are you, who are you going to support now, Connor? Weird. I know. <laughs> now that Sleepy Joe's way to bed. Oh, I'll go for the, the Camilla. Then Camilla's good. Yeah. Now, that's because for, <laughs> for anyone that ha- hasn't been on the planet, so Joe Biden, the first president in history to quit during a, a race. All right? Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. well. <laughs> he wasn't really racing. Uh, his, his brother um, fucking... <laughs> Yeah, probably would have been, I would say. I think the first, the first, first person, the first president to resign via Twitter, or X, as it's called now. Um, he hasn't resigned. He's going to stay the rest of his term, isn't he? Aye, but I mean out of the, the race. Aye. Uh, the first president to not tell. I think he was steaming. I think he woke up like, oh, well, fuck. That would, make more, <laughs> that would make more sense, because none of his team knew. Well, see, I... So the Biden team found out on Twitter? But I, oh, fuck, that is bad. Like, <laughs> it's fucking mental. Imagine losing your job from Twitter. Like, I mean, I, I don't go in anymore. <laughs> I know. You're sitting writing all these lies about Joe, about how well he's doing, and the next thing you turn on Twitter, I, he's fucking gone. It's mad that, because uh, <laughs> I was listening to some of the, the press coverage from the mainstream media, uh, and the scene to be said that basically what happened was the donors for the Democratic Party just went, we're not paying another fucking penny until he's gone. Yeah. Which really be. highlights to you what America really is yeah. in terms of your freedom and your democracy, is that companies that... We're funding it that don't think they're going to make any money back. I've gone, fuck that. Doing? I know what you mean. I just, my head's just going, and I'm not saying a word. I will wait until later on. We're not even going to say it there either. Oh, really? Uh, no, yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, she would be the last person I would have thought of putting three, but then. That would make sense. If you didn't want to it's, win, you'd put her through. <laughs> but it's also very, like, this, the stuff I've been saying online, say the stuff I'm saying online, I'm talking about just following celebrities on Instagram. Mm. It's immediately gone into identity politics. Yeah. So it's straight away like, oh my God, a woman of color. Imagine what could happen. They, they had to go to a woman of color because they had to stop calling her African-American. Aye, because she's Indian. <laughs> she's not African-American. Uh, which was been used for years all until, obviously, she revealed. She was like, no, no, I'm just... Like, we all just look the same. Uh, <laughs> the um, the eighty one million. Did you find that much of a coincidence? What was this? I didn't hear about this now. So Joe Biden obviously got eighty one million votes when he won the election, mm-hmm. and then the figure that she raised in twenty four hours of donations was eighty one million dollars. So everybody got a pound each. Everyone got a dollar each. Every voter paid a dollar. <laughs> just counting the horses walking around the trucker box. <laughs> With their own picture on us. <laughs> <laughs> That's shocking. I have apologies. And but it's looking forward to 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 what could be rather than being unburdened by what has been. Is that our catchphrase? Isn't it? Yeah, that's that that's fucking me. that slick shit. Because oh. because the thing about it is is that the the this is this started very serious. It's not like us to start. This isn't just rubbing on by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, this, not, yeah. Just this, had a chat. This supposed to be Mikey coming in and saying I fucking went on over. I'm not, but I know it's weird. Yeah, but I'll. I'll tell you some stories about last week though, because <laughs> uh, because she's she's not well liked, no, in the states. Like uh, she's um, she was an attorney general, and she's f- famously known for um, incarcerating quite a lot of black people, um, especially around marijuana. Uh, and that's marijuana's Colorado direction. Yes, just that's just on the outskirts <laughs> there of Denver. Uh, 
so they yeah so she had a lot of people and, and then as as attorney general not her personally going in but as attorney general a lot of people went in and um so that was that never went down well because i know the the democratic party are going to go down the route of oh she's a person of color Aye. But the actual people of colour are going, fuck you, Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> because she wasn't that... Uh, no, but now Nancy Tom. Uh, she wasn't very uh, helpful to them, in fairness. So that was her history. That was her past. That was after she was writing Montel Williams. Uh-huh. But um, up until then, I suppose... Is that well known or is that a conspiracy? Like, is that a wee conspiracy theory? Well, you can see the buddy was on red carpets together. Like, Seriously? Been, oh, I, I yeah, it's not hidden. Like, she was... I don't know, for some reason, every time we hear Montel Williams, we just hear Carpenter from South Park's voice. I tell you, Montel. <laughs> Montel Williams, Montel Jordan. Williams, Jordan. Michael Jordan. Williams. Montel Williams. Uh, I'll just Google it real quick. Google it just to make sure I, but I'm not sure it's Williams. So, yeah, I would have thought, I, I don't know. I, I, it feels like they want to lose. You reckon? Well, if you wanted to lose, if you wanted to win, just as a thought. Can we? Would you not fire on Bernie Sanders? If you actually wanted to win, if you actually wanted somebody who was popular, would you not do Bernie Sanders? Is or, Bernie not retired though? Or is he still... Oh, he's still there. He's going to be, he's, looks like he's going to be in the cabinet. Yeah, I don't understand why you wouldn't do. Uh, or Michelle but Obama. Is, but they, yeah, but is that, is that what they, are they really going for that so out of touch? The only fucking chance we have left here is identity politics? I think they know they don't have a chance. Really? That's what it's inspired yeah. on. Yeah, she's going to be the patsy. She's going to be the fall guy for... Because I think... I saw Robert Kennedy on an interview today talking about... Um, just talking about the Democratic Party. And he was like, it's not the party that he grew up supporting mm. in the sense of they don't... They're not, like, working for firemen or police officers or the health... They're, it's, no. it's, he's like, they're, they're essentially millionaires masquerading as fucking left-wing people. Yeah. Um, I mean, you take a look at some of their properties. You look at the, even Bernie, the biggest socialist we all love and all the rest. You take a look at this fucking multi-million pound mansion he lives in. Like, it's... it's. Uh, Bernie worked for it, but Bernie built that with his own two hands. He did. Um, I'm telling you. But uh, when they when they go into office and they're getting, what, 150,000 or 200,000 a year and they do it for three or four years and come out with 40 million. Aye. Going, oh, what happened to Aye, it? It doesn't make sense. What was that? Yeah. Mm, how did that work? Uh, so that's always been the case. That's always been... Uh, do you, right do back you feel... To, do you, uh, sorry, just to, not to interrupt, but, but I am interrupting. Um, <laughs> and this is probably more a question for Josh Rabbit on as well, just mm-hmm. fired in the. But do you think that, the, I mean, I reckon the chances of Kamala Harris getting shot at now. No. Or, do you not think so? No. Do you reckon in, in terms of. I think she has to be the fall guy. I think she has to be the person that takes that's the what I'm saying. for such a massive oh. uh, failure, which is going to be. Because it does, it does seem that the Democrats are posting these figures on social media mm. and it's like North Korea levels of well just pro- look at how because every, every comment's like you're talking shite but just look like, at what they did with her look at what they put how they how they announced the replacement she, they, there was no democratic vote there was no uh, primary run again so Joe Biden had had all the primaries they ran the primaries in, in whatever it was in March or April or whatever and so there was over a thousand delegates have to vote yeah. and they all voted he's going to be the nominee and then, like I said last week, and just wrapping on, I said if if if, if Biden accepts the uh, nomination, like Trump did last week, if Biden accepts his from the Democratic Party and then leaves, they can put whoever they want on. Yeah, you didn't call it like. But this time, they're just putting whoever they want on without doing. Oh, right, so that didn't so even happen. That then. didn't happen. So the democracy's out the fucking window. <laughs> the, the Democratic Party have just ruined democracy. They haven't done. They, just, they just shoved her forward and said she's going to be the one. Um, and I don't know if it was Biden's parting gift. Like a fuck you to the wrestling. They're going, I endorse Kamala. Right. And were they all going, oh, fuck, we're going to fuck have to you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, fuck Joe, what are you doing? I did hear somebody say Obama must have took, uh, taken Joe Biden to one side and been like, oh, Joe, yeah. you're not going to win this, brother. I don't think, yeah, I don't think uh, Obama's think, ever left the scene. Aye. He's always been there. Um, Gaiden, Joe. Aye. Aye. Mm. Don't drink our water, Joe. Trust me. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I, I thought I thought uh, Gretchen Whitmer, who looks like she's in the running for being the vice president, um, I thought she might have been up there with a uh, and Gavin Newsom, mm. but no, they went with Kamala. And even their own polling uh, last was it last week when they were talking about if if Joe Biden was to step down, who would be the most likely? She was the least likely candidate of all. Of De- that's from the Democrats. That's not from like Republican. That was the Democrats saying, no, she's the most least likely. She's the least exciting and the least liked. Aye, because she does have that kind of odd 
like we talked about it the other week as well. That that, that weird laugh from out of nowhere. She's like when Hillary saw the fireworks. Yeah, um, yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised if <laughs> if AOC is brought in as a fucking defense minister or something. Right. You know? It's a clown world. We're watching. It's a fucking movie we're watching. Like, yeah. Absolutely. If you think Kamala Harris is going to be the president of the United States, well then. Get fucking Kennedy in, because that man's... I know Kennedy will be all right, John. I know he's another 70-year-old white man, but it, it, he's fucking ripped. He's ripped, and he's... Uh, and he... He's smart, and he he knows what's going on, and he can relate to the people. Yeah. The working-class people. Even though he's not working-class himself, but he can relate to them. But, like, she has no way of relating. Aye. Apart from just, like, doing what uh, AOC... Did you see her speech a couple of weeks ago out in, in some park in, in New York? And she's bouncing. Like, it's a fucking Def Jam comedy thing, you know? Mm -hmm. She's fucking, like, really, uh, you know? And she's, like, literally hopping on her feet, like, of excitement, trying to rile up the crowd. Kamala Harris has started to do that yesterday. You know, trying to get real and shouting and roll. You're like, oh, my God, this is going to be a fucking shit yeah. show. Like, Montel comes out, like, you are not the father. <laughs> <laughs> by the time, by the time she actually gets uh, in t t towards the office or towards the election day, I mean, so many things could happen between now and then. Aye. So many fuck ups, and that the other thing is the amount of stuff that they don't really look into when, uh, for VP, but they want to look into her history now Aye. for president. So she'll have all to be out like everything. Apparently, there is like I mean, they call her the hot two girl. Oh really? Yeah. There's a lot of jokes being used about the fucking. Uh, <laughs> there was one, there was one meme put out just about a picture of her lying back on bed and these two big red raw knees. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was here, Advil for that was that's what she was known for back in the day. Now, obviously, everybody can uh, have their own sexual history, right? But so, what what do you think is the? I suppose we should maybe we need this for just wrapping on. But what do you think the reason would be for the Democrats trying to lose, just because they fucked it up so badly with Biden? No, I don't think they're trying to lose. I I, I, don't, I don't think they they would they, they would even attempt to try and lose. They're just going to the fucking. They, they just, just know they're going to lose. They just know they're going to. Well, they're especially with Biden now. They definitely. Yeah. yeah. I suppose there's no clawing it back. There's no a couple of back today, like, So I mean, it's maybe trying to save some face. Um, the yeah, we'll talk about it on the other thing because there's a load of shit going on with it. Um, mm -hmm. even just in the last, you think of the last eight days. I yeah. man, uh, I that, told you through my last eight days, you'd be uh, like, I understand why you can't remember a fucking thing. Uh, an assassination attempt. Oh, I yeah, remember that. Uh, um, a complete internet outage throughout the world from Microsoft. Halfway through a wink to assume. And uh, a president resigning on social media. So, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's, that's a big really wink. weird. Like, it's, yeah. not, like it's, it's not the norm. Uh, <laughs> Ted was more tired from that. <laughs> Taking two of their medals at once again. So, what do you hear what I did? And if anybody listened to the Lazy Boys podcast that we put up on Patreon, me, Shane and Willie, you might have heard the story what already. What is the story with that? Now, what's going on there? Just decided, I th I th Shane's just decided once a month we're just going to catch up and fucking talk shit. And it's going to go on everyone's Patreon. So we just, just split it in the Patreons. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to be part of it. Um, no, just let me get my feet in the door. Man. Fuck up, me, I'm only going in. Stick it up your shit hole. I'm just get Listen, my fucking sword out. So what are we going to say? What are you took to? And uh, So, I'll start from the start. I... Again, as you know, after last week, I was like, right, that's me back in the dad, back in the boxing gym, mm -hmm. getting Gordon. his weight off, right? So I had the same thing to eat three days in a row for dinner. Mm -hmm. I had two sweet potatoes, sweet potato fries, and steak, right? Forgetting that I do have a wee bit of IBS, you're not supposed to eat that much red meat no. when you have IBS. No. So about, let me think what time it was at, about 11 o'clock on Wednesday, I started shitting. Mm -hmm. And at about 6 o'clock on Wednesday night, I had to text my mother, 37-year-old man, had to text my mother and go, can you bring toilet roll and four bottles of liquid did sport around this house because I can't leave the bathroom and I'm getting dangerously dehydrated, right? <laughs> so my mother turns up with toilet roll, mm -hmm. liquid did sport. I go, there's 20 grand for your trouble. She goes, I have ice cream in the car for you too, son, because I know you're not feeling too well. And I was like, ice cream probably isn't the best thing for me to have, but fuck it, why not, right? <laughs> so... Took to, I thought, you know what? I've made, if there's ice cream there, I'll take out my edibles here. Right? This was Thursday, by the way. It was Thursday, you're right. Because Wednesday... Wednesday so Thursday, so, you were going to the gig I was at. So it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I had steak and sweet potato chips. Right, okay. Right? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I 
had like done a workout and all was feeling good, feeling fucking great. The skitter started. I thought it was maybe just one bad one. Mm-hmm. So I made fajitas for my dinner. <laughs> right? Because you only had one bad skitter. Right. And had I had a two now, you wouldn't have had fajitas. Really here, but. Good enchiladas. So I'd, I'd, I'd check my calorie count and all. I was all, I can eat a whole fucking. Because I hadn't I really had anything to eat all day. Uh-huh. I was like, I can actually eat all the fajita stuff that I've made here. Because it was just chicken breast and peppers. Right, yeah. Right? We're like fucking. I made my own wee spice blend. Right? So I got wired into the fajitas. Mm hmm. The spice blend, I should tell you, didn't taste very good. It was a uh, habanero chili flakes, hot chili powder, smoked paprika, and just garlic. Just fucked into it, right? So, so oregano or cumin or anything or not? Oh, I didn't even think about cumin. Like Mexican flavors? No. I didn't even think about it. That's not, right. Is cumin not more Indian? Mm, not a Mexican food, but it's cumin. Anyway, so I get wired into and, and, and it. Right? Protein and all. Oh, I. I've heard the bit about my mum turned up with Lucas bottles. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. By far, we edible. I'm like, I'll have a wee What was the rationale again now in the middle of all that about the, the edible? I just, I just really wanted there was to, ice cream I just, there. I just really wanted to get stuck into the ice cream. <laughs> and so mentally, you couldn't justify the I, ice cream. I genuinely thought to myself, I've probably got enough for a tolerance now that I don't get the munchies anymore. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought in my head. Right? Have you never seen me? Connor, I know, but I thought I had stronger will. I, you know what I, mean? I thought I'll test myself here. Right? I'll try and get all zen about it. Right? <laughs> so. Cobra Kai is on. Oh, so I'm like, well, oh, what a no, perfect Here we go. Right? What are they? So I bang away edible, have we wee bowl of ice cream, and go, that'll do. I'll watch an episode of Cobra Kai here, and then I'll fucking mm-hmm. go to bed. Right? And because the, you know yourself with an edible, it takes a while for it to kick in. Oh, I. So I, I'm like, oh, maybe, oh, there we go. Maybe we have to start, start to kick in now. And then I'm like, whoop, there we go. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm zombified on the fucking couch watching Cobra Kai, laughing my balls off at how cheesy it is. Right? So it's so bad. It's so bad. Like, the first episode was great, and then as you keep going, you're like... Because, it, 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 spoiler alert, everybody's getting along fine. Right. And you're like, well, there's going to have to be some reason for these cunts to fall out, and it's going to be something real fucking simple. And it, it's kind of... You're watching it going, nobody would be annoyed with that. Nobody in the world would... Right? Anyway. Well, I have a clip of you watching that. Um, Cobra Kai. Is this me... This is what you were sort of... There was a point I found myself thinking, I'm stoned as fuck and I've got diarrhea. What colour is my shite's going to be? Right? Well, this is what the message I got, which is obviously <laughs> you clearly watching Cobra Kai. Oh. You can't use the phone. It wasn't Cobra Kai. Do you know what, <laughs> do you know what happened laughing there? I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? Oh, well, hold on, sorry, I should have turned the fucking thing up, that would have helped. <laughs> it was the wee snorts in the middle, I was like... <laughs> I was laughing at what colours my shag going to be, right? But it was, it was coming out of my mind in my dead auntie's voice. So in my head I was hearing, what colours my skitters going to be? <laughs> right? And I typed it out as one big word, and I was like, ah, <laughs> right? And then, oh, I wish I had that I, fucking man, experience. We, we and you need to fucking you need to come around to my house one night and I'll just watch me take these things because they're yeah. fucking. I there's it comes a point on an edible where I go, I must genuinely be quite a happy person because this is fucking delightful, <laughs> right? Even though I'm sitting on my own yeah. trying to eat a full tub of ice cream because I'm depressed, but but you're not depressed. I'm you're not happy. I, fuck me, I was the other night. <laughs> so I'm watching Brooklyn Nine Nine, and there's a bit in Brooklyn Nine Nine where. Do you know the episode with the fucking sing the Backstreet Boys in the mm-hmm. cold open, right? Mm-hmm. So I stuck that on because I just wanted to watch it. And then I'm like, I wonder what the episode's about. And there's a bit where two of the, ca- Captain Holt and Charles are doing yoga and Terry Crews comes in mm-hmm. and he's like, I can do yoga. And they're like, you can't, you've got too many muscles, you're too big. And he's like, I can do, give me a yoga pose. So Charles goes, do warrior pose. And he does it and he leans back and sna- his back That's goes, right? Yeah, right? right yeah. And then Terry Crews goes, I'm fine, I'm totally fine. Now I'm going to walk out of this room using my trademark tiny steps, right? <laughs> And he walks like these wee tiny, like river dance steps, but the <laughs> sheer size of him, right? And whatever way it shot or whatever way I was looking at it, it looked like his feet weren't actually touching the ground. <laughs> he was just in these wee hops. And I lost my fucking mind, right? I was fucking screaming. I think that's whenever you phone me come back from the gig and I'm like, <laughs> right. you had to hang up. Right. You actually had to hang up. That's because you said you couldn't fucking drive with tears in your eyes. I thought that's because were... I'm trying to laugh at you, but you were, you were laughing that hard. I was getting the giggles. I wasn't even stoned. But I was getting the giggles from you having the giggles, and then I'm fucking driving on the A5, which is dangerous enough as it is the best time. 
<laughs> and then you're coming at me with this, and I, I had to. But I thought, I thought you just, you just went right. Oh, that was it. Was just the phone gone? I was dying. Okay. <laughs> and then, and this is a moment. Well, would I tell you what happened the other side of things then? Mm-hmm. So you were you uh, had agreed just to pop in. You weren't on the on the bill, but you agreed to pop into this gig I was in Derry. And then uh, I got there, and boy, it was like, oh, Mickey can't make it. He's got the shits. And I was like, or he took an edible. That's what I said, right? And then he sent me a message as I'm sitting beside him. And he went, just took an edible. I'm thinking, fucked. I went, fucking told it was, you. It was both. I want to say for the record, it was both. <laughs> it fairly stops the shits, too, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> then That's because your hole can't it, open we, we, when your mouth's open at the same time. We didn't hear the stuff I ate, but, right? So I've already smashed the four vaginas. I've had a bowl of ice cream. Uh-huh. Right? Then I had two packs. Ice cream, by the way. What it was vanilla ice cream with toffee oh. sauce. Very plain, because right. it wasn't well. Uh-huh. Then, I, then I had two packets of cheese and onion tato, mm-hmm. right? Then I got up to go for a pish. Came back, sat down. I was holding a bowl of ice cream. I hadn't had a pish yet. <laughs> I forgot to go to the toilet. <laughs> and I got up to go to the toilet. Didn't even have to go. <laughs> right? So I had the bowl of ice cream. So that's about half a tub we're down now, uh-huh. right? And then I was like, oh, fuck, I'm still sorry. I'm still hungry. <laughs> and I had a couple of fajita wraps left. And I went, I saw a thing on TikTok. Oh, no. Where you, where you can make your own pizzas in an air fryer just out of fajita wraps and cheese, right? So you just go fajita wrap, sauce, cheese, fajita wrap, sauce, cheese, wee toppings. I'm like, I'll do that. And then I went, no, if I roll it up and make wee, like, fucking bite-sized bits, because I have only a wee air fryer. Uh-huh. Mickey's wee bite-sized bits, put in the air fryer, be wee fucking crunchy. Cheesy fucking right. So I'm trying to... <laughs> I just think of just making tortilla chips. Really fucking here. So I've got tor- fucking wrap. Plastic cheese. Because that's the only cheese I had. Put plastic cheese on it. Put another wrap down. And I go, no, put a wee bit of sauce on it. Put a wee bit of sauce on it. Put another wrap down. Put cheese on that. Sauce on that. Got the third wrap. And then I'm trying to roll it up. To make like a sausage roll kind of effect. And it wasn't working. I was like, I caught that. There's no cheese in that end. There's no cheese in that end. Fuck it, I'll just microwave the bass. <laughs> I microwave. I just rolled up, microwave the fucking end, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, that isn't, that hasn't touched the sides at all, but I'm still starving. And I went, hold on, will you stop wait, there? Stop no, there for you, me. That's the, the, I'm getting, the, I'm getting to the, the fucking, fucking best bit. And I know I'm, you are. That's why I'm going to stop you there. You need and go, to hear this, Connor Keys. The, and Lev, so do you, right? The, the, the fucking, the, the, the rap, what the fucking, was that? Was that not enough to to make you think? Fuck, I don't know. This this isn't a good idea. It hadn't. It hadn't. You know yourself, and you're fucking high as fuck. You can't. Nothing fills you like. <laughs> so then I go. Do you know what'll fix That's this? Dread. I go. Do you know what'll <laughs> fucking fix this? Is one bowl of Widows. That's all I fucking need is a bowl of Widows. That's all you needed the whole time. Just probably. bowl of Widows. Yeah. Right. So go to the cupboard, get the Widows out. Pour a big fucking big fat bowl of Widows. Open the fridge. No milk. Oh. Fuck. What am I gonna do? Tell you what I did. I tell you what I did. I took the rest of the ice cream and I fucked it into the bowl. And I'm telling you something right now, fellas. God isn't a man. He's an idea. And it's widows and ice cream. I have never in my fucking life experienced anything more delicious and more satisfying in my fucking puff. It was phenomenal. Fucking phenomenal. Actually, when you say I it, haven't you know, stopped thinking you, about it. When you say it, it actually probably would be fucking it's lovely. fucking unbelievable. Widows and right? ice cream. Because, especially, because it was... Just, it was just that fucking, do you know the, the knockoff cart door Tesco's ice cream? But yeah. it's a good fucking smooth, mm-hmm. it's, it's borderline gelato texture. But then you've got the, but then the, you've got the, the crunchy, crunchy of the Doritos. And they're that fucking sweet and chocolatey. Man, I swear to God, I, I was like, I again, this is like the time I put fucking mini cheddars in chili. I'm a culinary genius. <laughs> yes, they've got the odd mix up. <laughs> Classic cheese and a wrap. Wasn't well, my we, best work we, yeah, I mean, as, a, as an hors d'oeuvre. There, there's always a, a process to the, the the whole thing, you know. You had to get, you had to do the plastic cheese to get to the widows. Yeah, know what I mean, you exactly. had to do the shit stuff to get the good stuff. Like, yeah. And then I was all out of ice cream. I wasn't finished, <laughs> oh. so I took a cooked chicken breast out of the fridge and just poured barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> and then I went to bed. I slept for twelve hours, <laughs> and I weighed myself the next day and I put on about half a stone, and it was the best day of my life. I also had diarrhea the next day because I'm lactose intolerant as well. So I... <laughs> <laughs> when you get yourself high enough, you go, I've probably fixed it. <laughs> it's probably cured. I'll be worried about it. My gut biome's normal. Nom, 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 nom. Even thinking about it now, I might go get ice cream on the way home. <laughs> I swear to try it and I just do it. Oh, oh my God. 
anybody listening to this, right, do yourself a favor. Go get a fucking Weedos box of Weedos and, and a thing of ice cream. Go and get Weedos ice cream in a bowl. Tag us. Put it up on your social media and tag us and, and don't explain it to nobody. I just, just put it on, tag us and say nothing. Because <laughs> all your mates are going, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going to do the next one dessert. <laughs> put up a full blown if you know, you know. <laughs> oh, man. I, see, now this is the problem. Or not the problem, but this is your problem at the moment is you don't be prepared. No, I'm prepared. I just eat everything in the house. That means prepared. The one thing I the one thing I haven't done <laughs> the one thing I haven't done to be fair is uh, get stuck into my apocalypse supply, <laughs> which because right. that's just beans and spaghetti, which would be perfect too. Like would be good, uh, but you, the apocalypse is common, so keep that. I'm tired of date, so it's like I'm grand. grand for the apocalypse. Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean it's it's time to stock up on the widows and all that sort of stuff to see. That's man, it's so good. Like it's so good. Now I'm, I'm, I should eat a bowl of it sober to make sure, but you should. It, it genuinely, but but it makes sense. It makes sense that you know a wee bit of chocolate biscuit, and see as crisps, see as the ice, as the ice cream mel- is melting, like the weedos do get a wee bit soggy. So you get that. You know when you get the end of a bowl of weedos, like that's nice the best bit. Eye. So it, you get all you get all the benefits of weedos milk, <laughs> right? <laughs> but there's ice cream, you know, what I'm talking about? and toffee sauce. I didn't even put the toffee sauce on. I didn't even fuck around. I with thought it. that was an ice cream. No, no, no. The oh, toffee, it was a bottle. Toffee was a sauce. Toffee sauce. All right, okay. I could have just drank the sauce too. <laughs> Thank fuck I went to bed. Just rub it all over yourself. Oh man, <laughs> I I have myself thinking about it. <laughs> and I was up, I was boxing yesterday, and then I went to the gym. I've been to the gym today. I'm trying my best to get the the weight that I've put back on. And, and all you can think about is weedles. And all I can fucking think about is weedles and ice cream. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about losing toe. Give me the diabetes. I don't give a fuck. That's my death row meal. If anyone ever asks, weedles and ice cream, chili and mini cheddars, and then weedles and ice cream. So this is the thing. This is where Maggie fucks up, and this is where the problem is. You don't if you're if you're a long enough stoner like I am. You, you but you pre- but you can you can go with just a multi pack of Monster Munch and a couple of tins of Pepsi. That's not enough for me. I need to eat everything. So I need wee bits of fucking mm, mm, bit of that. Bit okay. of this. That's what I do. But I I went into I went into the shop after one of these podcasts and just bought a wee mini mango. As I would call it, it wasn't even a full mango. You're not allowed to call one anymore. It was it was a mini mango. It was a mini mango. Just a wee just a wee just enough. A full mango is like what's. What's a, what's a, so? <clears throat> what did you purchase? Three one pound bags, share bags, and a packet of buttons. See, and you went, you hungry? And I went, no, I'll get not you. yet. I'll get, <laughs> get you in the long grass. You see, can't. see, but see, this is my problem with it. Is I want the sweet stuff. I don't. I'm not really. I don't have that sweet a tooth. Mm. But when I'm stoned, mm-hmm. that's all I can fucking think about. So I would. I annihilate a packet of buttons and one I'd need three packets of buttons and one packet of crisps. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. But that's what I'm saying. But I had that stocked in and prepared. Mm-hmm. I wasn't thinking about How long did that last you? One night? That's the one night, I think. Seriously? <laughs> that's impressive. Look. That's three bags of crisps, mate. I suppose it's only I three one pound. Oh, yeah, the one pound—they're not really sure bags, just big bags. They're, they're, In fact, when you really bags. look at them, one pound bags, it's mostly they're probably their normal bags I, that we used to get. Yeah, yeah. They're just a one pound. What bag. did you get? What was your crisp? What was your crisp of choice? Um, oh, do you know what, I, you know what I do too which kind of uh, psychologically helps me a wee bit when I'm eating them mm-hmm. is I get the wisps because they're low fat they're only nice tasting they're also very flavoursome when you're high very fucking tasty and the only tasty non-fat thing I've ever had in my life so shout out to Tito fair play to you with the wisps um, I went with a girl who was 19 she was pretty skinny non-fat no taste I was trying to make a joke about eating posse Right, uh, <laughs> right. It was pasteurized before you seen it. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go anywhere it was 19 either. Braces. There's no way you're fucking eating them. <laughs> you can get back up here, young man. Yeah, fucking I. Teams out of the fucking, fucking, fucking bean out of it. <laughs> what do you mean it means? But in hindsight, uh, flaps look like a kite in the power line. Cut the ribbons. <laughs> so you get spirals. <laughs> No, I got uh, yeah, two bags of us and a bag of beef fish shooters and a bag of buttons. But what see, I'm saying is... hoops would be the one I'd want whenever I'm... I, too I, crunchy. I, I'd say I want a good big no, crunch. No, too crunchy. Too crunchy. I, wa- I want to be eating something that hurts me a wee bit and I swallow it. No, I don't want to be eating something that needs effort. Because mm. that would be too close to work out. There was a point the other night, Connor, I thought my teeth had fallen out. <laughs> and then I remembered it was chewing crisps. Right. That's how... You, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I wrote notes on my phone and sent them to Taylor, being like, here, how funny is this? And she was like, that's the ramblings of a madman. Yeah, I got a few of them too. Like, yeah. But it, it does happen. I mean, I, I forgot, forgot what I was watching while I was watching it. No? Like, I went into work the other day and I, <laughs> and I forgot my teeth. 
Aye. That's, that does happen. You know what I mean? And I had to go home and fucking get my teeth. Get your teeth out of the cup. Aye. Uh, and go back. Aye. <laughs> I've, man, I, forgetting to go for a pitch is the one that really made me laugh. Like, <laughs> forgetting to go for a pitch I didn't need. Yeah. <laughs> What's but the, you took the energy to get up and go I, for it, but then I'm distracted by the fucking fridge. Do you know what I Especially with the edibles, because it just keeps hitting you. And I was like... Um, was that one, by the way? I was only one. I thought I had two. It was only the one. But there's definitely... Again, you know yourself with edibles too. Sometimes you get a batch where one of them has all the flavour. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that is the one thing. Unless you're buying them from, uh, like, a dispensary or whatever in America or something. Yeah, if you're buying them here, they're homemade. Aye. So, I mean, obviously, the batch is not going to be... They're going to try and make it as strong, but... There were three types of edibles I got. I gave you, uh, you somebody gave me one. I gave type. you the the number of the guy to get the other that one. Yeah, yeah. and then I tried the other, like, and they definitely were a lot stronger. But then there's another pack, totally useless. Oh really? I, uh, so yeah. you got a you got a good you I got you got the middle. I, you got the Goldilocks. I definitely got the, 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 exactly what you need. Just right. Just yeah, the Goldilocks. I, I booked boxing session tomorrow morning. I'd love to go home and just fucking do it again. Because it's, it's so joyous. Now here's, a, I'm going to, words, words of warning to mm-hmm. my good friend. It can become your best friend. Just be careful of that now. Well, that's, I do, I do think I should regulate myself too. You know the way you've had such a good relationship and a good friendly relationship with alcohol? Yeah, no, it's like I don't have any impulse issues at no, all. No, no, you, you've got that sort of, you see your, your good I, mates, like use your soul bits, if anything else. Mm-hmm. This one, you know, could become... Could take over, Aye. and and alcohol wouldn't be happy. That'd be, I would love alcohol. That. Would I know, but they wouldn't be happy because I'll tell you what it did on Saturday night. And then when alcohol would appear again, all fucking hell would break loose, mm. and then they'd fuck off again, and then you'd be back to fucking Mary Jane, and she'd just be there going, "Don't worry about it, Mike." <laughs> <laughs> Come on here, put your head in my daddy. Come on. <laughs> nestle in. Get in, feel that sweaty bosom. Oh, and do you feel this here? Now? I'll make you a cup of tea. Come on. What happened, you? Do you want a cup of cream? Who did it? To you? Don't you worry. <laughs> Let me, Alexa, put on Bob Marley. <laughs> what do you see? That was another thing that happened. I, was, I swear to God, this happened as well, right? So I, I don't know. I had my laptop line open because right. I was trying to edit clips of the podcast until I haven't finished. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> to see this clip that we promised last week. One thing led to another. Really. Like, <laughs> well, I'm sitting watching TV and I don't know what was said on the TV, but all of a sudden my laptop was like, Hi, I'm Siri. How can I help you? And I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Alexa went, there's five minutes left in your alarm. And I was like, am I making something? Everybody's smart speaker just went off. Swear to you said that. I know why. <laughs> Alexa, do a fart. Every time. Uh, but what a, what a lovely evening. And it's, it's, it, there was a point where I was, I think it was another note I wrote out on my phone. It was like, when you, like, when you look to your left for someone to laugh with and there's nobody there. And you think, is this desperate? Have I fucking made it? Because I was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Nobody here. Ah. <coughs> I'm going to go with the desperate route. Oh, no, fucking uh, that. I'm going to be honest with you. you know, uh, there's a, 100%. That's my... I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not ever stoned and sitting laughing at, with my partner. <laughs> right. so I'm in the shed laughing at you. Oh, it's funny, man. It's so fun. It's, <laughs> and I, I, I don't condone taking drugs or anything like that, but uh, try them. Try edibles and yeah. Right. Try, and try and keep them. It's a very um, nice, chill. But back to the original giggly. point I was saying was uh-huh. you're never prepared. I know. I know, well, I know what's going to happen every single night. So then I go right. to the shop and I but buy it. And I, I get constantly going, are you hungry? And I'm like, no, I just know what's right. going to happen. But the thing is, I never plan it. That's why it's so much fun. If I plan. I know, but remember the next time that if. Remember the next time you didn't plan it, right? Remember that the next time you're going to do it, go, fuck, I didn't plan the last time. And I ate fucking wraps with plastic cheese and sauce on it. Right? Just remember that bit. There, there might have been some actual plastic in that wrap. I'm not entirely sure about all. Of <laughs> like the way it was nice cream, I have to say. As soon as you said it, I went, "Fuck, that sounds alright." Try it tonight. I'm right, I you. get that. But the other one should remind you: be prepared. No, stock up. But wait, would you not stock because you don't? Because you don't? Um, or would you not be able to resist the temptation if they were there? Uh, 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 so what, what do you think about them? So right. So then stock the cupboards. Oh, but then, but then. So then they only, they're there when, if you ever did take the edibles. I, if you don't take the edibles, they're not there. You're not going to but touch them. So here's the way my brain's been working uh-huh. the last week. <laughs> you need to get back into the fucking boxing gym, right? right. So fucking don't be... Literally, I'm banned food for two days. I'm mm-hmm. banned the same thing. So it's just eggs and chicken and a wee ready meal. 
That's that's got all the protein. That's got all. The, I could just put it in fucking my fitness pal. Where's the fiber and all this? Because talking to somebody who had a oh, there's fiber. Yeah, there's plenty. Like the, the ready means they'll have spuds and fucking vegetables and all that sort of stuff. There's plenty of that. I suppose uh, I have the fiber, but I don't know. How it well, fiber optic. Uh, <laughs> Raisins, so, seeds, lentils, all that sort of stuff. Get them. They, they were all nicknames for me in school, so, so that's very true. <laughs> right. And the, that's also why I stopped doing PE. The, the, have to you need some roughage. Oh, I definitely do. Because like, that was... <laughs> Only because I had that stomach issue last year, I wouldn't have a fucking clue what um, I needed for that. There was a point where I could feel when the, the diarrhea changed from fajitas to ice cream. <laughs> the switch was flicked. I, I was like, oh, it's freezing. <laughs> ah! Thank God. Do you know, it was one of those situations, but um, no, because that's that's the problem that I'm having. At the minute is that I'm I'm con- I'm going right. You're getting back into fucking training. You're getting back into being healthy. You uh-huh. want to get this fucking weight off again. Let's fucking go. Yeah. So I'm just I'm not buying anything that could lead me astray. But then I'm also being like, hey, here's a wee, there's a wee fuck. How dare you? Now, yeah, I've just he was, uh, he was getting emotional uh, there. Hand over your mouth. Yeah, the just a pandemic. Can't yeah. even hold in a fucking thump. A, 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 a freeze. Jesus Christ. Sneeze. Freeze. Where, I forget what I was talking about now. Aye, fucking, fucking I'm not sneezy aye. there. Jesus Christ. Fuck, where's dopey and sleepy? Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do one up. Um, I can do a smoke. But oh, I, so, dopey, so, so I'm banned stuff for two days worth of food, mm-hmm. so that I don't go fucking mad. Oh, well, that's why I actually started. Could yeah. you hold off? So, so if I end, there. But, but what'll happen is I know that if I do buy, if I stock up for stuff for getting stoned, I'll go, I might as well get fucking stoned. I've got to bring in. <laughs> well, uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Saturday night, I didn't I didn't do great night. Uh, mm-hmm. I had a, a last minute gig for the Armagh Gaelic team. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that in a wee second. Lovely bunch of fellas. Right. Right? In fact, we'll just, that's pretty much it. Up Armagh, I hope he's winning class, right? Uh, so I, I thought that I thought there were, because you told me we're on like a sneaky jolly in a different county. Mm-hmm. Because they couldn't, if they were drinking anywhere in the county of Armagh or even Tyrone, no. and they were seen out, yeah, all hell break loose. So I drove down to Meath for this thing, mm-hmm. thinking these boys are all going to be blocked, right? And because I think because they've got to the final, even my brother in law was like, Oh, they've been taking coke and all sorts by like he, they're rock stars just for getting to the final, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I absolutely. So I turn up and they're just in their training gear, they've just finished a briefing. Oh, so they're all sober. So they're all oh, fuck, stone right. cold sober, man. Class crack, right? right. The no problems with me being dirty, like oh, shit, really, right? a football team, like. right? Really, really good lads, and uh, that was all well and good. And I, there's one guy who was wearing Crocs. I was like, "You wearing Crocs?" He's like, "Yeah, what gay, right?" Making fun of him, we better roasting, and then we got a photo at the end, and they all stood up, and I was like, "Fuck, we have some big units." <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe that's making fun of him, lads. <laughs> like. Huge, so big, big specimens, big there. fucking like as you oh, said, big mountain men. Like, mountain men. Oh, like, do you remember I said that time with them cultures from Lurgan? If we have to go to war, send them first. <laughs> send the Armat team in second, <laughs> right? Just to clean up. On, I have never. I don't remember Gal players be, playing players being that big whenever I was a young fella. No, I don't think. Yeah, uh, these lads are fucking yeah. weapons. Like, yeah, M Galway country with Templin, boy. I can't leave Galway alone. I like ten. Now you fucking you go back down eat your own. Oh, I have family, family in Galway, so that's why I have. Fuck. Well, fuck we affiliation. I have family I, in Armagh too. Don't I, I, you know? Yeah, my family. Uh, you can yeah. Uh, so yeah. Do you want to come to the pub on Sunday? Watch a match. We had this conversation last week. <laughs> I, like, the, I know, but I just we thought, need to stop those I just, thought, I just thought maybe stop. I just thought edibles. maybe now that I'm not actually at Lusty Beg, you maybe sack it off and come hang up with me. And say, well, that has been discussed. Um, with you not being in Lusty Beg, I don't think. I know. Get us told what you were saying. You fucking slabbering bitch. The party's not going to be happening. Yeah, it'll not be as good. Mm-hmm. I remember driving home all early at night. No, oh, that was fun. Good night. Bed for nine. <laughs> yeah, Instead of, of nine a.m. Bunch of fucking <laughs> families. Oh, Cardi, be real men. Real arm arm in, get up. I was in bed at half six. That was the longest I'd been up in fucking ten years. I was a barber. I went to bed three times before. Like, <laughs> you just got too nosy to sleep. No, I just fucking. Oh, that's right. Do you remind me about that? Oh, hi Taylor, love you. Oh my god, I want to go to bed and talk to you. It's actually Emer was talking to. So Emer wouldn't talk to you. Oh, thinks, would I? Thinks you're gay anyway. Yeah, I know, but that's why he <laughs> likes it up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, joking, Emer. Sorry about that. I just, I just can't lose. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to not lose a slagging match. <laughs> I'm like that couple in Pulp Fiction. Any one of you motherfuckers moves! <laughs> like, I'll execute every motherfucker. Uh, the, yeah, the... Um... But I, so I got home, so, sorry, this is the thing. So finished that gig. I was finished about half eight. Okay. And got back to Lurgan about ten. Mm, still no. sunny. Oh, no. And I was like, I'm going to get pissed. Oh, you went for the pissed route this time? Yeah. Okay. So, uh... 
I went and bought a wee bottle of fucking Jameson and a couple of bottles of ginger. And I haven't drank Jameson dry, and I didn't drink an awful lot. But by fuck, I was dying on telly. Like. You see, it does. You see, you see why I don't. You know I'll, what I mean? Have you had a way up the two? Aye. How you felt that? No, you might have felt a wee bit depressed about the plastic cheese and, and wraps, but you definitely depressed. weren't feeling. I yeah, even if you had diarrhea, you weren't feeling like, oh my fucking, what is in my body? It's I definitely the last two weekends have made me go here. You need to fucking, you need to rein that in. Like mm. you're not twenty two anymore. Like mm-hmm. so, dying. I don't know. Happened last weekend. That you came to that conclusion? No, it's, it's. I mean, I've been thinking about it for a while. Uh, I've realised it about six months now, but I just keep pushing through it. <laughs> Ain't another quitter. It's a thought. Yeah, like, a thought that counts, no? <laughs> Even fucking Kelzaggy fought a broken hand. You know what I mean? So the uh, yeah, so that's going to be the the challenge now for the rest of summer. Then it's, the challenge for the live podcast. Yeah, this could be the first time I'm not fucking. I might drink beers. With the live pod. Oh, Lord. Be the first time you see me doing a live podcast with a ice bucket full of whiskey and ginger. <laughs> I'll maybe just swap back to gin. We'll see what happens. <laughs> when you're trying to negotiate the it's fucking pro- levels it's first. It's probably my taste buds are affected. Ah, my taste buds, that's what it is. Uh, it's Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Bad, man. All day. Like, I ordered the pizza, do remember? Like, I remember? I was on the phone and then I was like, oh, there's a pizza coming. <laughs> Well, I uh, I had a I had a fucking one of the weirdest gigs I've had in years up in uh, Cushion Dunn, which mm-hmm. should explain to you that just where it is. I've done a couple of gigs up there over the years that've been all right. It turned out okay, but it, uh, do you know one of those ones? Cush- Cushion Dunn's one, no Cushion Dolls one with the tower, isn't Doll, it? Yeah, Aye. Cushion Dunn is out on the coast, and uh, it was just. Do you know when you walk in, you're like, what the fuck have I, what What are we doing here? So it was like a small room, there was 22 people in it, mm-hmm. but it was packed with 22 people. But there was, the the main bar was part of it, if you know what I mean? It was like, there was just a doorway, there was no closed off doors, it was just a doorway there, and there's boys all sitting in the bar, literally right, right beside you. And uh, this fucking two-year-old child running around. And I was like, what the fuck sort of place is this? So that, and then that was all right, and... <laughs> The two year old was there, and obviously their their parent his, his parents were there, um, and they weren't steaming or anything. They just the woman had a a, a pint and, and the fella had a whiskey, and they were just they were on holiday and they were just right. there for, and I got chatting them sort of to the side and all. They were, they were pretty cool. They were good people, but uh, I can't remember who was on. Ross Mitchell was on second maybe, and the toddler just sort of got away from the mother and just walked through the audience right. and just past the front. Of and Ross was like, he didn't know what to. <laughs> <laughs> Why Ross? The autism went really fucking crazy. He was like, I don't know what to do, don't know what to do, don't know what to do. Kick it every time. <laughs> so that was right. if somebody so, approaches the stage, I see what happened to Jim Jeffries, you just fucking unload, <laughs> let the hands fly. <laughs> so I was, that was all right. Anyway, so, uh, break came and again, I was like, what am I fucking doing here? And uh, the woman was standing beside me. The show was about to start again. And I says to the woman, I saw, where's the wee lad? I says, oh, I don't know. He's about somewhere. I'm like, what? that's that's not their first kid. That's that's, that's not that's number four, I reckon. If there's a two year old, so then I got all say, I was like, I think I just met Kit McCann. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's the child? Oh, he's about there somewhere. And I, was, and I mean, I'm not exaggerating. The toddler, like, he's Aye, it's cushion done to you. Look around that young fella's at the bar, like, and then I tell her, she's not getting the house. Fucking lying about not working all day. Fuck off, bitch. So then, uh, and, the, and in the room, people were sitting with their backs to the stage. You know, all that sort of stuff. I was like, right. oh, get me out of this fucking... But it turned out great. The set turned out really well and all the rest. But it was just that an initial thing. And then this... God forgive me. The man clearly had uh, a disability of some sort. Mm-hmm. He was an older man. He was at the bar. And you knew... I don't know if it was Parkinson's or something he had in the way. But he... There was like... From the bar down to the front doors, this wee slight gradient to go, to go out. And then he must have a condition where he can't walk on a slope. So he decides to get on his knees from the bar, right? So I'm on stage and I can see this boy kneeling himself Shuffle. down the fuck. <laughs> right? And I felt so sorry. I was like, somebody going to help this man. Aye. But there was somebody with him walking in. Then he got to the front door and stood up. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That's, he's got a claimant. 
<laughs> so I think it's something he was balanced on a on a on a, what a, it could a be, gradient, it could be a vertical or even like something like that. Yeah, so he could, but he, he could stand. He, he still wasn't very mobile, but he could stand. I just thought, fucking hell! I mean, talk about being legless. I was like, that is fucking mental, and I couldn't say it, but it came to my head as he as, as he walked past, as he shuffled past, right. and I said, the, I said to the boy run afterwards, I says, I was going to say so, and he was like, fuck, you didn't. That's the owner's whatever, and I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> could have been fucking. I pushed no, I remember doing one up there one time. Might have been cushioned on. And uh, there was a guy, guy and a girl in the front row. It was the only two of them in the front row. Everyone mm-hmm. else took the second row. And you could tell the guy, do you know one of those wee towns? You can tell, everyone knows each other. Mm. So, and again, when you do stand up long enough, you, you can spot he's the local character. This is the guy that's going to heckle. I had that Saturday night. Right. So Friday night was a mixture of a couple of people from cushioned on. The rest were like tourists, some right. killed there or whatever. That was a weird one, yeah. But I had this guy sit in the front row and double denim, mm-hmm. shirt tucked in, big belly, mm-hmm. right? And uh, heckles me or something. And I'm like, right, okay, I'll have a chat to this guy. What do you do for a living? Starts laughing, the whole crowd starts laughing. And I'm like, what fuck's you do? And he's like, I'm the local undertaker boy. <laughs> and I'm like, class, because I have go. fun with this. So I started making jokes about him fucking, like, I'm like, you're looking at me now wondering what high day I'm working aren't you? Trying to fucking, like a cowboy, before a shootout, <laughs> to walk out the fucking... And it was around December time, and I was like, what do you want for Christmas? A plague? Because <laughs> <laughs> he gets get loads of work on him. But it's, it's all, those wee weird moments where you, you find yourself on stage going, I'm the only one that doesn't know. Yeah. And this could go fucking either way here. I had exactly the same problem on Saturday night. No. Uh, myself and William and Kieran were doing a gig in Ballyhornan. Yeah, Where's that? Exactly. Way the far side of Down Patrick, any fucking further east of me in Scotland. Uh, um, I don't, you know what I mean? And I was like, right. and eh? oh, yeah, fair enough. So, uh, went to the gig, and the people that run it were lovely. It was a community center actually, so I, I, I got chatting about community work, whatever. And then I started the gig, and there was a guy standing at the back, not seated like everybody else, just one guy standing at the back, and then was joining in every 30 seconds, shouting from the back. Mm-hmm. I'd say a line and he'd try and he wasn't even heckling it was just like joining in or right. answering the, you know what I mean I just, and I was like dealt with him a number of times like I don't know how many times I got the audience to fucking like they were roaring and cheering but I could feel from them too and I was like fuck you a bit of a fucking no. so I actually ended up having to get Ian from Shine to speak to him to tell him to fuck up because I what I said to him was on stage I was like I'll be polite about it Kieran will not. <laughs> I was like, I'm just telling you now. So I was right. I got out. And, he, and he, one of them fucking, all right, what do you think? I, you know, hand out. Aye. He's going to shake me as soon as I was walking off stage. And I just, I barely even thought. I was like, fucking him. Because I was, <laughs> I was ready to fucking bust him. Like, Aye. really so annoying. And so, so arrogant that he couldn't tell the rest of the room wanted him to fuck up as well. Aye. And then I got out and the wee woman that was running the whole thing came in and she goes, oh, he's a fucking disaster. And, he's and she walks away. <laughs> And Ian goes, you know, that's, his, that's her son. I was like, get the fuck. I was no way. And I was like, I was about to go into a full ramp Aye. on fucking white crazy. That's one of those things you, <laughs> you, you just le- don't you know. Learn that pretty the whole quick. place knew that he was her son, Aye. but I fucking... You, like, you learn pretty quickly the phrase, actors won at every show. <laughs> because otherwise, mm-hmm. I've yeah, done it myself. It was just what Ian said to me. I was like, no. I was like, me out of here to fuck them to get home. The same went well on everything the ground, but it was just he kept he kept interrupting and it kept like I I was I was and so then he glad kept smiling from the back and I, I was, was like, the same with that RR magic. I was so glad none of them heckled because I would have had nothing. Like I would have had fucking nothing. And at the end when we were getting a photo, I'd done that bit about um it's an old bit about you know the girl asked me to slap her ass. Aye. And uh one of the fellas put his arm around me. Right. <laughs> and he was like, I'd leave your ass looking like a brake light, sir. <laughs> and and I had to just be like, you would. <laughs> yes, daddy. I'd, I'd fucking let you. 100%. <laughs> but this is this is my problem with all that, is that I wouldn't class that man as a heckler. I said, somebody interrupting. It's an interrupter yeah, who, yeah. Who, who wants attention and wants to be... A heckle can sometimes be fucking brilliant. Yeah. A heckle can be a real, like, gotcha uh, sort of thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, you fucking... And, play, that's good. A good heckle's... A, that's the thing. A it's, good heckle's class. But they're so but few they're, far between. They they're, don't they're, exist. The only thing that's worse... That's, the hecklers, fair enough, right? That's part of the fucking... Mm. Part of the, the job, grand, yeah. right? Somebody that does that, that thing, like heckling, like interrupting, yeah. is 
annoying as fuck. Right? Like, the, the worst one I ever got was in the Empire one night, and some guy just went, when's Colin Murphy on? Ugh. And I was like, he's not on the night. He's like, he's funnier than you. And I'm like, fuck me. I, that's just that's just hurtful. But have you ever had somebody heckle, do all right with a heckle, and then go, I can do this now? Ah. And then they, then they start interrupting. So a, a successful interrupter. Kryptonite. That's, that's, what, that Kryptonite was, like. that's what I had on Saturday night. And it was... Again, it dealt with him each time, roasted him, fucking, and I think then he's starting to enjoy it. Right. That's the problem then. Again. Cause again, Choking himself. <laughs> it wasn't even, as I say, they weren't even that funny. And what's even, the best heckle you've ever had? Sorry to interrupt you, but what's the, what, have you ever, have you had, do you have one where you go, fuck? Uh, oh, there was, it didn't happen to me, but I witnessed it. Right. Uh, I think I told you this story before. There was a fella, and this is way my first year, maybe in a comedy, there was a big fella who was as big, if not bigger than me, who was doing comedy. Um, you'd know him too. You remember? He used to have great. Uh, used to have greyhounds. He had walked a bit. Do you remember him? No. Was he? Where was he from? Up that direction somewhere. The other. I don't even remember his name. Oh, Neil Woodside. No, no. Um, I can't uh, think it's anyway. So I'm just what? trying to think who else is as fat as Connor. <laughs> Rikishi? <laughs> Rikishi Sunak? I don't even know who Rikishi is, but I know he's fat. <laughs> he must be fat, obviously. He's a big, small one, fella. All oh, right, okay. Uh, Yokozuna was my... Ah, okay. oh, I should have went there. Oh, Go on ahead, then, sorry. Um, no, I forgot what... Is it, you're the worst in that cunt on Saturday night. That, that was the first time it happened to me in years on, Friday, on Saturday night. He interrupted me that badly, uh, and I dealt with him for that while. I was like, "Where? The, what have I just said, and where was it? Right. You know, I'm, I'm real fucking annoying. And you're like, you were saying something, there was a fella... Oh, so anyway, it uh, says you bigger than port, you. So port port Pearl from Blade used to do stand up. Port, <laughs> port a Fer- wrecking ball with a microphone used to do stand up. Port of Ferry Yacht Club, right? As you do. And the guy Lee Stirrup had organised the gig, mm-hmm. so that will give you the caliber of the gig. And Lee Stirrup was always putting his foot in it. He was. Stirrups. Oh, I'm sure I don't. Cowboy thing. Yeah. Oh, don't. I'm, don't. Joe, Joe, he's, don't. Do you know who he supports? Oh, I'm afraid. Spurs. I, I, was just, I was going to say I don't want to spur you on. But listen. Uh, it's time he got back in the saddle too. He hasn't done some years. All right. Fucking. Whoa. <laughs> so. <laughs> you watch Ted Lasso? <laughs> I always wonder why he wasn't a suit. Yeah, he was a straight suitor, but. He's <laughs> driving this on Duke. John Wayne. Doesn't that's a long walk though. Anyway, that's a long one. So he uh, uh used to pay you with a festival of dollars. <laughs> Sorry, going ahead. So big fella used to walk around. Right. Pounds. Anyway, he got haggled. Right. Go ahead, tell your story. No, 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 go ahead. No, what was I don't have a story. So that's why I was asking you to tell one, I've got none. <laughs> so he got up and he was telling a joke. And I, to be honest, there was a a, a man who he was in his mid fifties. He was he was sort of haggling the whole night, or he'd just been a bit of a dick. And he, in the fairness, he was a wee bit, he was witty at times. Like, mm-hmm. But the guy, the comedian, got up, started telling a real old like pub joke, right, where you kind of could see where it was going. And so the joke was something to do with a, a whiskey, and then an eighteen year old. I was an eighteen year old. Whiskey. Oh, I, that, yeah, that sort of thing. Right. So the guy in the audience could see it coming too, and he answered the punchline. And the audience laughed, and your man was like, oh, Jesus, oh, wasn't expecting that. Yeah, you threw me there. And he goes, fucking couldn't throw you if I tried. <laughs> That's very good. And it just, that is very just good. throwed him. And I and me as a big, you know, I was going, never say throw you. Aye. You put me Aye. off. Note to self. Yeah. No. yeah. And I've never said that phrase. Because he just, the time of it, couldn't fucking throw you if I tried. Class. Like, That's them, a heckle. Put That's the, the, the mic in the sun and go home. Yeah. That's a yeah. time to go. For through the tile and fucking ride. <laughs> Because all, all the worst ones I've had have been when it's been they've said it quietly. I've talked about I've said this loads of times. Mm. The one that keeps me awake at night is the woman that walked up to the front of the stage and just went, "You're not very funny," <laughs> and nobody else heard her. I was like, "That's fucking sublime, that." Yeah, I was a sniper heckle. That's a that. Fucking sociopath. I swear to God, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I fucking knew her too. <laughs> it worse. I went to school where I was like, "Fuck you!" But you know I'm funny. She sat beside you in business class. <laughs> I thought she was your teacher. Business class or business studies? I'm always getting those two things confused because of the way I travel now. Uh, <laughs> fucking mind your business studies <laughs> I love stand up 
Oh, it was a long fucking drive to those two venues. Cush and Dunn from Oma and Ballyhorn from Oma were like two hours each way. And I was like, this is a fucking... And they're not even two hours motorway. Aye. It's like all the back roads. That's why you want to get yourself back in that manual car, man. Because I took the back roads. I, I did have a nightmare going down to me. I couldn't find my wallet. Right? I fucking don't know where it was. Mm. And because the toll doesn't take... You can't use your phone. So I left the house, no wallet. So I had my phone. I was like, I need something to use my phone. So I had to take the back roads to get the maids so I could avoid the tolls. And fuck, what a drive in that wee wagon, boy. Love that. Jesus, you feel like Jeremy Clarkson himself. Well, a cunt? No, just in a, oh, right. in a wee sporty car going around a bend. Um, why do you not have the e-toll? Because then, they, can then they, they start asking for the money for all the e-toll that I haven't paid for over the years. No, actually, they wouldn't know. That's very handy for that sort of thing. Really? Just that's your dashboard. You just go through. Fuck. Well, at least we've covered all that. Anyway, yeah, well, next time you're going to Meath. I next time you're heading over, <laughs> fucking get the A-Toll. This podcast is sponsored by A-Toll. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never, I think you do the cross-border a lot more than I do, but I've got it just for the pandemic, just because I had done a I, few gigs in Dublin, but you're always fucking But over. weirdly, I do tend, tend to take back roads more often now because I stay awake more. See, if I'm, see, like, the, the, like, to Galway, where it's just motorway, uh-huh. I'm fucking like that the whole way down the road. Oh, yeah? Because it's a straight road. Whereas if I'm driving through wee towns and fucking wee mm-hmm. guns, I, it keeps me awake more. What's your go-to soundtrack when you're traveling a long journey? It's funny you bring it up. I have got a playlist on my Spotify. It's just called Old Time Rock and Roll. Uh-huh. Right? And it's just... Shade. Absolute pish. Uh-huh. Right? Joan and the Jets. Fleetwood Mac, Queen... Fucking dad She's rock. He's my cherry pie, right? Da- dad rock. Yeah. yeah, I have the Wayne's World version of Ballroom Blitz on it, which I listened to four <laughs> times on the way up here today. <laughs> and what I do is I turn the music up loud enough that I can't hear myself singing. It's I not Tia it. Carrera singing, is it? Yeah, it is not. It is I. Well, I don't know if it's definitely her, but it was, it was her in the movie. The movie. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and what Where I do is she go to? Oh, Tia. She wasn't she, but have you bring, ever seen Showdown Little bring Tokyo? Tia to your eye. Have you ever seen Showdown Little Tokyo? Yes. Will you see them? Mm-hmm. And it has the worst line of any movie. Now, if you haven't seen Showdown Little Tokyo, check it out, right? So I haven't seen it since fuck I don't know. Man, it's it's a, a shame you have to pay for it on Amazon. Right. right? It should be free. It should. Everybody should be allowed to see this movie. It should be in the museum of fucking. So it's Dolph, Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee, right? That's right. Brandon Brandon Lee plays That's right. Showdown Little Brandon Lee plays a half Japanese, half American guy, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind of racist because he's half Chinese. Dolph Lundgren <laughs> plays a, an American guy whose parents got killed when he was growing up in Japan, so he learned how to be a samurai in an orphanage. Is that and, racist because he's Swedish? I don't know. Oh, okay. They're both cops, right? right. And it's also from Sweden. I can't remember. He's not Russian, I know that. Oh, yeah. not I, I, think, that. I think he is Swedish. Right, okay. Uh, but yeah, Nev's going to find out first. They're, they're both both cops, and it's, it's, like, it's like Lethal Weapon. Right. Okay. In terms of like these guys aren't getting along, <laughs> you know, like, there's a so many bits in it. So it starts with and I oh, forget his name. The bad guy, he's the bad guy from every fucking kung fu movie ever in the nineties. Uh, the dude who played, he, he's in Mortal, bad guy Mortal Kombat, bad guy in every fucking right, okay, right, long haired dude. And the movie starts with him. He's a drug dealer for the the Chinese triads, whatever, or the yeah the yakuza. Sorry, yeah. So no, he's not. No, no, no. That's that's you're thinking of the guy from Bloodsport, Bolo yeah. Young. Bolo Young, yeah, it's not him. Bolo. It's uh, K- somebody young. Kerry Young or something like that. Right. Uh, Bolo Child? No. Uh, but he's, um, so he plays this fucking drug dealer, right? And the movie starts with him giving a woman fucking, like, ice in a oh, pipe. Okay. And then he's like, he's like, she's, a, she's like, oh, I'll bang you if you fucking give me drugs. And he's like, oh, yeah, no sweat, but I like to film it. So he turns the camera on and all the Yakuza stand around, right? And she gets her daddy's out. He's like, and he really squeezes her boob as well, which makes you kind of wee bit uncomfortable because mm. it's not like a, it's not a caress. He's like, fucking me, I'll tit you, cunty. Right. right? And then he just cuts her head off and you, right, <laughs> pulls a samurai sword out and she's all out of her mind on fucking meth, cuts her head off, right? And then Tia Carrera plays her mate who's like a witness to it somehow. So oh, has to win the protection, like, right? I need to go back up fucking. There's a bit in it where they arrest one of the Yakuza and they have him in an interview room, right? <laughs> and Brandon Lee's questioning him and he's getting nothing out of him and he goes in and Dolph Lundgren and him are chatting. Dolph Lundgren looks through the mirror and the guy starts doing something and he's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And, he ro- and the guy breaks his own neck. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking <laughs> breaks his own neck. And you're like, 
I saw that when it was maybe 13. And I'm like, this is the best movie I've ever fucking seen in my life. <laughs> but So you paid for it recently? No, no, no. I, I had it on DVD. It was in like, All right, okay. remember Hayton used to do like three DVDs for a fiver <laughs> to buy? Like, And uh, so then there's this is the, the worst line of any movie ever, right? So it's a callback. So what happens is Dolph Lundgren has Taya Carrera in his house, mm-hmm. right? He lifts a car at one point and blows it up. <laughs> he lifts, he picks a fucking car up. <laughs> so he has her in the house. And uh, he's like, I gotta go to work here. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dropping clocks, taking bed. Right? You have a grand. There's a shotgun. Uh, I'm way to work. There's tea, coffee, there's Weedos and ice cream. <laughs> you enjoy it? It's a local delicacy. Right? And he's like, if anybody comes through that door, just fucking shoot them. Mm-hmm. And she goes, what if it's you? And Dolph Lundgren's like, you won't hear me coming. Right? So fast forward about 40, 40 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Right? Dolph Lundgren has a secret house. Of course. That reflects his Japanese heritage. Mm-hmm. So it's all rice paper and take your shoes off. Right. Look, there's two lights in this are amazing. Right. So he's in a hot tub, right? Tia Kirk was walking towards the hot tub. Dolph Longer was like, Ch-ch-ch. and she's like, it's just me. And he's like, come on in for a bath, love. Right. So she strips down to the bur- the bur- bum, right? Uh-huh. Fully, like, full in the nip. So you see your daddies, right? So straight away, you're like, pause that. I actually 15, sec- 15 seconds later you're like resume 15 <laughs> seconds ago I was going to slag you for paying for that and now I'm thinking I'm going to buy that you, fuck, when you, you, <laughs> you pay double for it now like right so they end up fucking having a wee curtain in the hot tub and then there's a real slow 90s sex scene right oh, saxophone music and all that's going to on right oh lovely and, but it, it's a wee bit too graphic for a kung fu movie like he at, there's one point where like I think Dolph Lundgren puts his finger in her mouth and the size of his hand, she's like, oh. <laughs> right. put your cock back in. Right, right. So then they're lying all canoodling afterwards, and Tia Carrera goes, that time I heard you coming, and you go, ah, oh, fuck, uh, respect yourself, uh, would you? Right? Then the bad guys. You, you're talking to the script writer there? You're talking to the script writer, right? <laughs> you're not talking yeah, to yeah, the <laughs> Covered in your own, <laughs> your own mess, right? And then the bad guys up somehow find where they're staying. So they send an army of cunts oh, right, yeah. down to fucking fight them, right? So Brandon Lee comes running in. He's like, the fucking bad guys are here. Dolph Lundgren's like, take that shotgun. And he's like, what are you going to do? He's like, I'll be fine. Opens a cupboard full of ninja weapons. <laughs> right? So these guys have machine guns and bazookas. And he's all, I have nunchucks. And throwing stars. And, and that wee fork <laughs> Raphael has, right? And, For doing the garden. Right. And then... But then there's a great, there's a great line, there's a great line where Brandon Lee's like, so still just protecting the witness, right? He's waiting for the bad guys. A bit of banter, right? Oh, wow. And Dolph Lundgren goes, she was afraid. And Brandon Lee goes, I saw you get changed. I saw you getting changed for that hot tub. Or no, I saw your dick and you're getting changed for that hot tub. I'd be fucking afraid too. <laughs> <laughs> You'd imagine Lundgren would be oh, quite the weapon. Bound to have a weapon on him like that. Man, six foot five. He has a severely huge fucking brain as well. Very, very clever man. Very smart man. MIT or something he went to? Uh, yeah, yeah, really. He's like an uh, astrophysicist or something. Something fucking, really absurd. Like there's, a, there's a real good interview of uh, Sylvester Stallone talking about why, why they chose him for Rocky Four. Mm. Hey, the reason I chose Dobbs is he walked in the room and I hated him. <laughs> he's perfect. He's six foot blonde hair, blue eyes, and he's a genius. I hate this guy. <laughs> Do you know, have I told you that... Uh, when he put Sylvester Stallone in the hospital, I think it's probably worth yeah, it. Recently, we talked about it. Yeah, that's what's my favorite movie fact of all time. He punched him so hard it dislodged his heart. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Like that's what you were talking about during the uh, the the boxing. Go oh, yeah, because he yeah. thought you were going to do that at some point. I did. Well, but, I definitely took his heart away. From him. <laughs> uh so no, I mean we're going. To, everybody has to go now and watch Big Showdown, Little Tokyo. It's class. And try out the ice cream and weedos. Do them both at the same time. Oh, I don't, what's that's an edible? What's that's an edible? That's, that is a perfect night that's a That's a date pour mm-hmm. Like 100%. On that note, we're going to go over to Patreon and answer some questions. Uh, yeah. <coughs> thanks for listening. Tickets are available for the live podcast, 17th of August. Uh, my tour starts on the 6th of September in the Waterfront Hall. Run all over the place. Buy tickets. Come to the shows. Bit of crack. Yeah. We're going to have... Uh, did, we, did we announce who's coming on? Not yet. We sh- should we? We'll do it. We'll do it in we'll the Okay. Do it later. That'll do. Right. See you later on. Cheerio. All the best.